Welcome to the City Manager's Report. The City Manager's Report is your preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda and an update from your Oshkosh City Manager. Your hosts, Emily Makowski of Oshkosh Community Media and City Manager, Mark Roloff. and thank you for joining us on your city manager's report your source for all the latest and greatest local topics going on right here in your city of Oshkosh I'm your host Emily Mikowski joined as always by your city manager Mark Roloff so first off Mark I'd like to thank you for joining us today oh great to be here Emily <laughs> always great to have you uh, we're gonna go ahead and dive into our first half of the show which will deal with some of the hot topics going on here in Oshkosh take a little break and then we'll return with the review of the council meeting agenda for Tuesday May 26 2015 so Mark, the first thing we want to talk about is really, uh, ex it's an exciting item that we want to preview here is the Field Operations Facility Open House. Uh, we've been talking about this for the past two years now since the groundbreaking and uh, it's kind of finally come to life here. And so we're really looking forward to getting a chance to get a tour throughout the, the Field Operations Facility as well as see some, some cool things in there too. Yes, long <laughs> last we are looking forward to this. Um, yeah, just a reminder everybody, Saturday, May 30th, 9 to noon, uh, with the ribbon cutting at 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. that, that'll be the ceremonial part. So if you want to be there for the, for the, the big hoopla, it's 10 o'clock. But we also want to take this as an opportunity uh, to do more than just look at the, the field operations facility. We're going to put on some demonstrations about yes. things that we do that you may not know about or you may take for granted or wonder what does that vehicle or piece of equipment do so we're going to do some some field demo so if you get there a little early you can take a look at the facility and look around but then we're going to do some demonstrations of a uh, uh, different piece of equipment uh, how the recycling and garbage trucks the automated trucks work with the yes. with the arm that picks up the garbage and uh, uh, sewer jetters and mm -hmm. things that you just always wonder. The behind the scenes stuff really it's kind of a behind the scenes look at field operations facility operations and the the building will be open and in use that day it's the the week after memorial day so they're going to be making up for lost time on that monday uh so you might even see a few trucks coming in and out uh doing their their actual work that they do <laughs> it really will be neat so uh you know encourage people to come by mm -hmm. we're very proud of all the work we've been able to uh to do and the efficiencies we're building in so i uh, can't wait for everything to uh to unfold for the public to see. Yes, so again, Saturday, May 30th, 9 a.m. to noon, there'll be some self-guided tours, a light reception, uh, some cool photos and demonstrations, and uh, ribbon cutting ceremony at 10. Looking forward to it. Uh, next thing is another, another ribbon cutting and groundbreaking that we have to look forward to here, and that's for the South Park Inclusive Playground. Um, and that's kind of, we talked about that previously as well. It's Friday, June 5th, 5 to 8 p.m. at South Park. Um, they just started laying the, the rubberized surface the last time I was out there taking pictures. But uh, ribbon cutting ceremony at 530, we're really looking forward to it. And Mark, I can't believe how fast this project was from start to finish where it is now. Well, you're always thankful when you have good weather during a construction mm -hmm. period. And this spring is because of the dry weather, it's been very good. So yeah, they, they're getting the rubberized surface down there. They're really getting close to being finished. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a wonderful project with you know, primary funding uh, from private donations through the Community Foundation, Oshkosh Area Community Foundation. So we, they're such great partners with everything they do. And the, the group challenged us to, to, uh, to raise money. They said if they raise money, would the city match? And we've done that. And so uh, within, what, six to eight weeks from really? the time we broke ground, we're going to have it. So like you said, Ribbon cuttings at 5.30, so if you can't get there after work or school until 5.30, that's okay. If you're not, if you're not there for the ribbon cutting, come anyway. There's going to be a lot of cool things there at the is. park. There is. They're going to have some fun entertainment, I think. Um, and you, just to take a look at the actual playground, it's really neat. Um, from when I was over there, they, it's really cool. They have a, a little station for how to read Braille, uh, so you can feel the, the Braille and see what the word is. And there's uh, some really cool slides and swings. And it's just a really cool addition to South Park. I think we're all really looking forward to. It's a lot of fun. And that's really what this is all <laughs> it really about. It really is, yes. It's, it's, it's intended for the whole family of all ages, all abilities. Um, that's what the Universal really, you know, 
the inclusive playground of means. So uh, June 5th, Friday night, even if the weather's a little rainy or something, we got the shelter. Yes. Come on by and take a look. <laughs> Great. Uh, another update that we want to talk about, and this is kind of a, a little bit of a bigger one, is the closures on Highway 21 uh, that's going to be starting next Tuesday, May 26th. Um, this is a, a pretty significant project here. Right. Well, this goes back to what we're calling, you know, it's called I&I, &I, inflow and infiltration. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we have some old manholes that have that have holes in them that water seeps into and so we're sending water down to the treatment plant that doesn't need to be treated so we get brand new manholes in there that will um, will uh, not take in the water uh, the hole itself it's not just the manhole cover but the entire manhole so it's going to take a little time so uh, it's going to start uh, the day after memorial day and it's going to take about a week and a half mm -hmm. uh, our goal is to make sure that we're open for traffic uh, better on weekends because there's a lot of boat traffic and stuff going on there but we wanted to wait until after the university was closed um, and uh, pick a, a more convenient time uh, that it's least disruptive so you're gonna see a little uh, uh, inconvenience but there'll always be one lane going in each yes, direction you'll still be able to get through there it just might take you a little bit longer and I know some of the turns might be restricted too right if you're for example coming from the west side you want to go to Fratello's instead of making a left turn at Arboretum mm -hmm. you're gonna go all the way up to um, Algoma make a left then make a left turn on Arboretum to get in there uh, there's a dentist office there mm -hmm. um, you'll probably have to loop around the same way to get in there so you're gonna see some restrictions but it's not impossible right. but it will be a little inconvenient so plan ahead give yourselves a couple extra two three minutes and you're gonna be just fine great uh, next item we want to talk about is some Memorial Day updates um, as usual uh, for Memorial Day there will be no garbage and recycling on Monday May 25th uh, and what will happen is your collection will move to the day after your regularly scheduled pickup will be uh, also no go, go transit bus service on May 25th as usual for Memorial Day. Uh, okay. I believe the office at Go Transit will also be closed. Right, and so and don't follow me. My, my, my neighbors too often follow <laughs> me and I forget about the same stuff that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the day after, you kind of forget if you're busy. And also the Memorial Day Parade. Yes. Uh, that's going to be uh, starting over at the courthouse and going mm -hmm. to uh, Riverside Cemetery. It's a wonderful, uh, uh, very uh, solemn event. and to honor our veterans. So that's the other part of Memorial Day, so don't forget that. Yes, and you can watch it on uh, CATV2, excuse me, we'll be covering the parade. Uh, myself and fellow, uh, one of our veterans, Mike Hurt, will be co-hosting that parade. So we're really looking forward to it. So if you can't make it out there on the 25th, definitely tune into CATV2 for that. Uh, another thing that we want to promote a little bit here is we've got a lot of uh, openings on our boards and commissions. And maybe, Mark, you can give us a little bit of a insight as to what's exactly available. We're always looking for good people that uh, want to just give a little bit of their time. We do PSAs and everything, but when you take a look at some of our joint uh, workshops that we've had with our boards and commissions, the city council relies heavily on the input from our boards and commissions on a lot of very important policy issues. And they like the fact that you have groups of people that are focusing on these, these a, a single issue and give their best advice to the council. Mm -hmm. It's very important for council to get that advice because they're getting the perspective of, of the general public on these issues, um, but with a, a, an idea in mind about focusing on a plan or a, a goal that the city set and how can we balance those things out. So um, I think you described them as the foot soldiers for, for council. They really before. are, they, mm -hmm. they are. And they, they're the people who help uh, they're the building blocks of our policies yes. in that. So we've got a lot of boards and commissions. You know, the graphic was just there. Maybe we can show it again because we've got so many different boards and commissions. A lot I can, of options. <laughs> and I can tell you right now that there are vacancies on the Grand Opera House Advisory Board, the Committee on Aging, um, Plan Commission Redevelopment Authority. But I would encourage anybody, if you're interested and there's not a vacancy, let um, let us know, fill out an application, get it on our website, and get it on file so that if another vacancy happens, and they can happen at any time, right. you know, people move, their situation changes where they, they can't uh, serve at that day and time of the week, um, they, they resign from the commission because they can't put that time commitment in. Um, and so the mayor comes in and is looking for applicants. A lot of times it's like, well, there's a vacancy on the Committee on Aging, 
and there's no applications. So if you get them in, you kind of give yourself a little bit of a leg up on being considered. Um, plus, if you're, you're interested in more than one, one may open up earlier than another. So sometimes you just say, well, what's available? I'm willing to help anywhere. So uh, get your name in there. Let, uh, let the council know that you're interested. What happens is the mayor reviews the applications and then brings them to council uh, for consideration. So, uh, I mean, there's never any guarantee, but generally, if you bring them forward, the mayor is going to recommend and the council is going to approve. Yes. So uh, we absolutely uh, enjoy having people there. And it's a great way to get involved. If you're looking to get involved in something, this is a great option for you. It's not a huge time commitment like a lot of people might think. And, you know, your voice is really heard, too, on these boards. It's, you're really making a difference as far as, you know, helping council out make, making these huge decisions. So it's a great a great thing to do. So we really hope that people can, can get on the city website, take a look at some applications. Uh, so now it's that time of the show where viewers have the chance to ask their city manager anything they want about things that are happening right here in Oshkosh. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the question mark is this week. All right, Mark, the question this week is, what can I do if my neighbor's lawn is too long? Well, you know, there's, there's really two separate answers, and I know the question here is intended to be, you know, what, who do I call at the city and everything? Mm -hmm. But quite honestly, the first thing, you know, you should do is uh, consider talking to your neighbor. Now, some right. people very, have a real awkward, feel awkward about that if they, uh, they're worried that they might get the neighbor mad at them or something, but... Oftentimes I've seen uh, relationships get uh, fractured when um, the city does get involved. So mm -hmm. first consider talking to your neighbor. You, you, you can still call the city, but consider doing that first. And, uh, but if you do decide to call the city, um, first thing you gotta do is there's a complaint form on the city website. Mm -hmm. uh, you can grab that or just call 236-5054 and uh, we'll take care of you. But the grass has to be more than eight inches tall. It's not which is pretty tall. Which is pretty <laughs> tall. So if it's if the if you take very very good care of your lawn and maybe somebody else takes a few more days, um, it's got to get it's got to be pretty tall for you to call it in mm -hmm. um, because if it's if it's six inches, we're not going to go there. Uh, we're generally going to wait until it's at least eight inches tall before we intervene. Okay. But there's also things happening if it doesn't, uh, if people don't comply. So and if it is over eight inches and someone comes out, just to give you a notice alone, it's it's a twenty dollar fine. Right. If 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 somebody has gone that far where they haven't uh, mowed their lawn, mm -hmm. and somebody takes it upon themselves to call it call it in, then it's a twenty dollar service fee for us having to go out because we got to send somebody out there and verify, right. take pictures, do all those things. So. It's a $20 service fee. A lot of people don't like that. That's why I really would prefer people talk to their neighbor. I, yes. <laughs> but then the process starts. And if we have to follow up again, uh, it's going to be a $50, um, $50 fee. And then it's going to be a fine if the city has to cut it, plus the service fee itself. So you, know, you could find yourself forking over $300 if you didn't do it. So yes. It's a hefty, uh, a hefty chunk of change there. And, you know, if this happens multiple times, it only goes up from there, too. So right. uh, like you said, I think the best option is just to talk to your neighbor. I think I would appreciate it if I got a little warning ahead of time of getting a fine. So um, it's great question, very good seasonal question too as people are just finally starting to get their lawn mowers out. So. Absolutely. Great answer. So thanks Mark. If you'd like to send a question to Mark you can email it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it right here on the city manager's report. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll dive into the city council meeting agenda for Tuesday May 26th. We'll be back in just a few minutes on city manager's report. Want to know what's happening in local government? Stay in the know with City of Oshkosh Government Meetings, live on TV City Cable 10. 
online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org and on Community Radio WOCT 101.9 FM. Miss the live coverage? No problem. Catch replays on City Cable 10. Stream online from oshkoshcommunitymedia.org or visit youtube.com forward slash Oshkosh Community Media Services. On Tuesday, May 26th, Oshkosh Community Media Services, City Cable 10, and CATV2 will be relocated for viewers watching on digital televisions that are connected directly to the cable line. Cable customers will need to perform a channel scan after the changes have been made. The new channel positions will be 97.10 for City Cable 10 and 97.2 for CATV2. For those with tuner boxes issued by Time Warner, there will be no changes in channel positions. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to City Manager's Report. Thanks again for joining us. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the preview of the City Council meeting agenda for Tuesday, May 26, 2015. So Mark, first off, uh, there's going to be a proclamation for the Historic Preservation Month as well as an Acanthus Award presented. So maybe you can tell us first what exactly that is. <laughs> well, the Acanthus Awards are uh, awarded by our Landmarks Commission and what the what their intention is is to recognize individuals or groups that have uh, done improvements to their property that are very consistent with the historical nature of that building. So they haven't uh, kind of undone the, uh, the, the architectural beauty that goes into historical buildings. So right. that's what it's about. And uh, we do these every year. The Landmarks Commission honors these folks. Uh, last year, uh, Shirley Maddox, a former council member and member of the Landmarks Commission, uh, does a presentation. Last year, the Christine Ann Center, right a couple doors down from mm -hmm. City Hall, was honored for what they were able to do with uh, expanding their building without detracting from some of the historical significance, the architectural beauty that it had. So it's really a, a, a testimony to the people who recognize the value that their building holds from a community standpoint, mm -hmm. and they're willing to uh, improve it, yet not detract from it. Yes, and Oshkosh is a great city for that. There's so much, uh, you know, beautiful historic architecture here. So uh, I, I can imagine they actually have a hard time finding the person or having to choose one of so many options for this award. Yeah, they get into a couple little different kind of categories. I think maybe they try to do a little bit of residential, a little commercial, okay. but they, they want to recognize that. So it's always interesting to see these stories that unfold from these. You get a little history of the uh, the building itself and then what the group or individual did to to prop it up or restore it, which is a wonderful story. It, it, it preserves values in older areas of the city, but it also just celebrates our history, which is wonderful. Yes, definitely. Uh, Mark, next item we want to talk about is item number 10, resolution 15-248. Now this is an award bid for the 24th Avenue boat launch restroom renovation. Um, this is kind of, we've talked about it a little bit before, and it's kind of a part of the park's master planning as well. It was interesting during uh, discussions of uh, the park master plan as well as the master plan for the individual parks. Mm -hmm. We asked the public, well, what would you like to see? And it wasn't necessarily, we want to add this or add that. It was preserve what you have and, and make sure that you uh, improve what you have. Uh, and the restrooms and the shelters were two of the biggest things that came out of that. So you've seen a lot of restroom re restoration, shelter restoration, and over at the 24th Avenue boat launch, um, the, the restroom there is a, is a, a major service for the people who use the boat launch, mm -hmm. so we're restoring the restroom, just like we did uh, at uh, Menominee Park and we're doing at South Park. Uh, we're gonna be doing at Stevens Park this summer. Uh, this is another one that we're doing to, uh, to maintain what we have, which is very important. Yes, it's just like you said, right in line with the master planning, really listening to what Oshkosh residents are telling us and improving and maintaining those current things that we have that we love so much is very important. So. Uh, Mark, next item we want to talk about, item number 14, resolution 15-252, is approving some engineering services with AECOM, and this is for some stormwater projects, and this is kind of the next big one here. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about it. We have, you know, 120 watersheds. You hear me talk about it all the time. Each one's individual. This one is the Libby Nicolay watershed. Uh, we've already done a project there. The project uh, behind Oshkosh North High School was one of those that's actually in the Libby Nicolay watershed. We had purchased some property uh, just uh, 
east of Mike's restaurant, Mike's mm -hmm. Place restaurant um, uh, last year. And so now the process is to get the design ready so that we can eventually construct this. Um, this is a, a very uh, important area because this literally goes through east-west through the north side of the city. Uh, we've had a lot of flooding on Jackson Street and surrounding areas in the past. This is going to help mitigate that mm -hmm. and this is just the next step in the process. We've done a lot in Sawyer Creek. Uh, we've done some downtown. Uh, Libby Nicolay, we've already done some. But, but it, for the north side, this is one of the bigger watersheds. Um, you can always take a look at a map on the city's website to see, well, where, what exactly, what watershed am I in? Um, and your neighbor across the street may not necessarily be in the same watershed as you because Mother Nature chose these watersheds, right. not a subdivision map. So <laughs> mm -hmm. look for those things and know, but Libby Nicolay is a huge one that, that cuts right through east, west through the north side and goes all the way uh, to the, the channels that are off of the streets with all the channels in there. They go over to east of Bowen Street and that's where they discharge. So this is another project we have going. And this is a detention basin, uh, not a retention basin. And we were chatting about this before the show, the difference between that. So it's not going to be like a city hall project where there's a huge uh, retention basin. It's it's more for short-term water detention. Yeah, and uh, you know the engineers will always correct me on these things, but the it's because uh, it's not universal. But here's what I say, and this is what you want to know for. <laughs> Detention is D for dry. Okay. That's it. Once you know That's that, <laughs> then you're in good shape. That's how Mark's mind works. So generally, if they're detention basins, they're intended to be dry. Okay. And that's usually what you have. But it's for temporary uh, flooding control. And then it dries up. Um, you'll see the one over at uh, Tipler Middle School where uh, I was just there the other night. Soccer games were going on there on that field. But if a storm came, it would serve its purpose. The uh, soccer game wouldn't be going on anyway, so you have the uh, the game or use it as a detention basin. They work very well. Mm -hmm. The one over here will be in that near the Main Street area. It'll be very effective to uh, control stormwater. Yes, I know we're all looking forward to more stormwater control, so we're anticipating that uh, to start probably sometime around next year, correct? Yeah, that's okay. what we figure. Wonderful. The next item we want to talk about, item number 33, Ordinance 15-271. Uh, we've talked about this in the past a little bit. This is for creating some bicycle lanes on Murdoch, Murdoch Avenue. Uh, but what it's really referring to is the overall road diet that's going to be happening there. Uh, correct. Uh, we had a workshop just a few weeks ago with multiple boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. We had the uh, Bike and Pedestrian Committee. We had the Plan Commission. Uh, I believe we had the Traffic Review Board as well as the Council. And this is the area we're talking about. This intersection at Elmwood and Vinland, uh, kind of a before and after, what we're doing is we're reducing the number of through lanes from uh, four to three. The middle lane would be a, a dedicated turning lane for either direction. Um, the reason we're doing this, there's a lot of emphasis being discussed about um, uh, bike lanes, but that's part of it, but that's not really what we're, the primary issue. The primary issue is traffic safety and yes. can we improve traffic safety without um, hurting volume mm -hmm. and that's really the crux of the issue with any road diet. Um, we have a road diet that we instituted on Sawyer Street. It doesn't have an impact, uh, a negative impact on traffic volume. What you're talking about with uh, dealing with something on uh, Murdoch is one lane in each direction and we've had the Wisconsin Department of Transportation look at it and they believe it can accommodate traffic but it's about accident uh, elimination there's three different types of crashes that can be reduced by going from four to three lanes if somebody wants to turn left as shown in this example with a red car um, the blue car can hit it from behind because that red car stops so quickly to make a left turn that the blue car crashes into it that's one example of uh, a potential accident we're trying to uh, avoid. Eliminate with that turning lane. Right, and then the other ones is that blue car swerves into the other lane to avoid crashing into it from the rear and the yellow car then uh, runs into it because the blue car moved too quickly mm -hmm. and uh, the blue car wouldn't be at fault but it's not an issue of trying to worry about fault. We're trying to avoid these accidents. From happening at in, all. <laughs> in the first place, yeah. And then there's the third one that um, when you take a look at when you got a four lane traffic um, the yellow car, the, the car turning left, can't see that car mm -hmm. as well. Um, and so you kind of take your chances. 
when you have that dedicated turning lane, you have a much better sight view. Um, it's called a, a, a zero uh, degree angle uh, okay. view of it. And so you can see the yellow car much easier because the red car isn't obstructing the view. It makes for a safer left turn. That's what we're trying to achieve out there with the, um, with the road diet. Now, in the process, you also have lanes dedicated for, for bikes. Mm -hmm. And Oshkosh has become very accustomed to having bikes on sidewalks, but really that's not recommended either. Having dedicated bike lanes uh, will encourage that type of traffic. We're not there yet in terms of bike traffic, and I recognize that, but the reason staff's recommending it is because the data from the DOT shows that we will not hurt traffic volume uh, by I'm doing this. We've got, it, we don't have that much traffic volume, and it's a U.S. highway. The DOT watches that. They're not going to be recommending that if they didn't believe it wouldn't impact road volume because I can tell you they've already looked at it on Jackson Street, mm -hmm. and there are people out there who would like a road diet, but the DOTs looked at it and said, no, it really wouldn't work. So. Right, and I think that's a great point, the, the fact that it still needs to accommodate the amount of traffic that's going through there. Uh, I know some, in some circumstances a road diet is implemented to uh, kind of slow that down, but in this case it's really a safety issue, and you know we can't be interfering with the amount of traffic going through there. But it's a controversial issue. Public <laughs> input's very important, and I think that's what council's ultimately going to wrestle with, mm -hmm. because any time you see... Uh, when I've seen a proposal to increase the number of lanes, people come out and they're concerned about that. Now this is a proposal to elim eliminate or reduce the number of lanes. People, changes Ch change is hard. Change is hard, <laughs> but you know, we have an obligation to focus on public safety, and that's what this is about. And hopefully those issues will come out. Certainly the staff's going to you know, certainly go along with whatever council decides on based on public input, but w we're here to tell you that we don't believe it'll be a, a, a compromise to public safety. Right. We'll see where it goes. Next resolution we want to talk about, uh, Mark, is number 38, resolution 15-276. This is approving the professional service agreement with GoEDC to complete the aviation cluster study. Now we've heard about this a little bit. We've really had a lot more emphasis on the aviation business park, but this is another step in that. <laughs> right. The, uh, the business park itself is just a vehicle, but we need to target industries to fill the business park. So, uh, you know, at the groundbreaking, we talked about the vision we had. The state is very supportive of it. Lieutenant Governor Clayfish has been here a number of times, mm -hmm. uh, not just for the groundbreaking, but on other issues. Uh, she's a big supporter of aviation. This is a collaborative effort that we have going on with uh, the Department of Defense grant and GoEDC is going to assist us in targeting specific aviation industries that can go into the park. So we're real excited about the concept of what can happen there. I know you said uh, it's not a it, if you build it they will come type of thing. So it's really kind of addressing that. You know, we're, we're having this resource here, but we want to get the right businesses in. So exactly. looking forward to that. Last item we want to talk about today, Mark, is item number 40, resolution 15-278, uh, dealing with the Marion Road water tower, which has been a very popular subject, and this is uh, trying to approve the spheroid tower. We had a presentation to the council at the last meeting where we showed them the two examples, and uh, we really need to get the structural decision made. So this is an example of our current water tower with what a spheroid tower would look like. Mm -hmm. And staff's recommending the spheroid tower because we think it'll be less obtrusive um, and then we can work on that. There's also the other example of a, uh, a composite. You see it takes up a little more space on the horizon, but some people believe there's more options for might some Might blend type, a little better with the building. Or aesthetically, so. you know, some people might be able to do something mm -hmm. with it. Based on whatever council decides, we're totally okay with it. We just want direction on one design or the other, but spheroid is the one we're recommending just because it's not as, uh, uh, busy in the horizon. Wonderful. Well, we're looking forward to seeing the new water tower out there and talking about this at the council meeting. We're just about out of time, so Mark, thanks as always for joining us today. Happy to do it. Again, the city council meeting is this Tuesday, May 26th. You can watch it live on City Cable 10 or online at oshkoshcommunitymedia.org. You can also listen to it on 101.9 WOCT, which is now also online, and on the TuneIn Radio app for mobile devices. Don't forget, if you have a question for City Manager Mark Roloff, you can send it to questionmark at ci.oshkosh.wi.us and he'll answer it on the next episode of CMR. So thanks as always again for joining us today and we'll see you next time on City Manager's Report.